So I went out over the weekend and I went to a couple of parties, right? Obviously Inferno and then another random party that I went to that wasn't the best. I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want to get anyone in trouble and stuff. But in general, I had a pretty interesting chat with some people on a WhatsApp group that I'm a part of that I'm not going to mention as well. I don't want to, you know, bait up anybody's names and stuff. And we were talking in general just about dance music and clubbing, etc. And the conversation somehow steered itself around um, queer spaces and kind of, you know, the it's amazing parties that whole scene is putting on anybody under the kind of queer LGBTQ plus community. I feel like in London is really smashing. I feel like they put on the best productions in terms of a party you know kind of in a quintessential way where you kind of get dressed up you make an effort i don't make an effort unfortunately but you know people that actually do make an effort put makeup on pick amazing outfits i feel like um the queer scene is doing it the best there's no one else doing it better i think everyone else is sort of like doing the stereotypical or the typical not stereotypical the typical sort of like booking the best dj out there who sells the most tickets putting them on a flight and hoping that thing sells out and then just having people dance in the club that's already kind of pre-designed for you but at least with the queer scene they're actually you know going in with their own people they're essentially some in some cases they're getting their they're hiring their own security staff they may be retraining the ones that are already on board or giving them some guidelines of how to kind of treat their patrons they're trying to change the interior of the space that they're using they're coming up with cool concepts of the one i went to recently just had this idea about a whole like um like a strip club thing they had dancers dancing on a pole and they had this um fake money that you'd give that could be exchanged for tokens like some really cool and interesting things kind of going on with how they kind of view clubbing in a way to kind of go out there and enjoy yourself in this quote-unquote dance scene dance music scene right they're doing some cool things but obviously with this kind of success comes people like myself right who you would describe as a regular cis gendered male right a regular straight dude or some would describe me as a bro which i don't think i don't think i'm a bro i think that's a bit disparaging to describe me as a bro but also i don't think being described as a bro is a bad thing i feel like there's, a, there's too many of these sort of like derogatory terms being thrown out there i think for the most part we are all kind of all one because you know when the clubs close when the government come down and it's like a like a like a pile of bricks we're all gonna cry do you know what i mean it wouldn't matter if you're a tech house bro or if you're a you know a queer person that kind of part is these up events i'm talking about you're all gonna feel the effects of it so i feel like we kind of have to move to a more unified beat of a drum personally for me but you know that's unlikely going to happen but anyway moving on I feel like with the success of those kind of industry, with the success of those parties in those scenes, it's only going to invite more quote unquote normies, more bros, and more people that don't exactly ascribe to the lifestyle choices or to the lifestyle or to the sexual preferences or to the identity that all those people do, you know, subscribe to. So with that, I feel like there's going to be a little bit. There's going to need to be more conversation around conduct and how you behave in those spaces because even for myself being an avid fan of techno being an avid fan of djing culture in general being an avid fan of dance music being an avid fan of music and being somebody that was kind of my first sort of dilly dance into dance music scene and nightclubs and whatnot was through tech through disco sorry not techno disco that was my first kind of dilly dance into it italo disco indie dance uh new disco all that stuff is what i kind of got into and if you listen to those sort of tunes they're very gay right they're very kind of out there they're very outlandish they're very loud i remember going to the first horse meat disco parties when they were launching obviously obviously was um an addict of the love fever parties that they put on back in the day r.i.p if you remember if you know you know love fever one of the best sort of disco nights out there so i'm very familiar with that whole entire scene and its history i'd read up and watched many documentaries about the whole disco scene in the early 80s especially in new york with you know the esteemed clubs like you know studio 54 and whatnot going forward so i'm very familiar with that and of course comes with that the whole entire sort of lgbtq plus umbrella you could say basically invented that entire genre some of the biggest djs in that scene were essentially gay or identified as queer so clearly i'm aware of that whole thing but even for myself going into predominantly i would say queer spaces lgbtq plus spaces has been a little bit of a mind shift in terms of how i conduct myself because i know that I'm the guest there. I know that this party isn't made for me. It's made for people that, you know, for the most part, don't feel 
comfortable or feel um, seen or feel accepted or feel welcomed in kind of conventional nightclub spaces. So they create these other nights that they do in unconventional spaces or spaces that aren't necessarily taken up by the regular sort of person so they can feel safe in their, you know, safe space, quote unquote. So I understand when I go into these spaces that I kind of have to somewhat mind my P's and Q's and for the most part, mind my business, right? The girls aren't there for me. The guys aren't there for me. No one is there for me. They're all there for themselves. And I kind of have to just enjoy the music and just kind of do my own thing. But of course, when you go into these spaces for the first time, you have to kind of, I won't say train yourself, but you kind of have to get used to, you can not used to, you kind of have to work up to that point. It's not something you kind of can kind of click into straight away. Because especially if you've got bad habits of kind of going into those sort of spaces and getting high, getting drunk, you can kind of fumble around and make a fool of yourself, make the people in there completely, you know, uncomfortable and sort of ruin their fun. And I remember for me, the first time I sort of noticed that was when I maybe went to Bergheim, maybe the first or second time on my own. I think when you're with friends, you don't really notice things. You're just kind of in your own little scene. You're kind of, or when you meet friends there in a the kind of club like Bergheim, you tend to just sort of make your own party. You're not really seeing people. You're just kind of doing your own thing with your own little group and having a whale of a time. But I remember when I first, first, first went on my own, which might have been the third or fourth time, I remember just standing in the main Bergheim floor at the back where if you know about Bergheim, you know it's the main floor and they've got these sort of like platforms towards the back and then they've got this sort of like rail sort of thing that you can just rest on and you can just watch. So I just remember just sitting there for an hour just like, fully sober just staring at everything thinking wow this place is amazing kind of soaking in because I like to do that when I first go in there go in there completely stone sober just on water and just sort of soak it in and then go and work your way up to the whole you know gear you want to take whatever it may be and I remember standing there and then at the right at the front for whatever reason I guess however the light shone you know they got great lighting people in there it seemed to shine on some girl I would assume I don't know how they identify themselves but a girl in there and she was topless right and she was wearing this amazing kind of like leather PZ, PVC, like I would say they were kind of like hot pants sort of thing. They were great. The way they just fit, everything was amazing. And she had great tattoos as well. And then for whatever reason, the shot latched on somebody else and they were wearing, they were topless too. And I was latched on somebody else and they were kind of with the fit just thing. I just remember thinking, wow, I never, I actually never noticed this before. I guess before you're just in your own world of wrapped up or too high, you don't notice these things. And now on my own, I'm noticing it. So I'm just kind of staring, not even staring at them, just staring, not even staring in their eyes, just staring kind of at their kind of frame overall, the sort of silhouette of these people. And I remember straight away, after staring for a little bit, but not even realised I was staring, the, someone caught my eye, like the kind of our eyes crossed, because clearly, you know, if you're staring at somebody, they can feel you in the back of the head burning. And then suddenly she started covering up. And I was like, oh no, like clearly, I kind of looked away, I was like, damn, like I've now made her be seen. Do you know what I mean? I've kind of made them feel uncomfortable because I was kind of leering or staring or whatnot. It wasn't my attention. I was just kind of looking out into the distance of these crowd of Bobby's bodies moving around and the light kept shining on these people for some reason. And it made then I soon realized like oh yeah I keep forgetting as great as this club is this is still a club that was founded on queer LGBTQ plus kind of like principles right I mean Berkheim it's kind of founded on that so or the entire scene basically in in, in, Ber in Berlin has been founded on that unless you go to like a house party for the most part it's kind of been founded off the back of that entire scene so essentially you're always a guest in these spaces and you always kind of act you have to kind of move accordingly and then from then on I feel like I've done a good job in terms of like behaving well in these spaces just being a good kind of patron for the most part when I go on my own anyway I then tend to just keep myself to myself and just do my own thing if someone kind of talks to me or likes to cut off my jib or whatnot maybe I'll kind of say something cool but for the most part I tend to just do my own thing or if someone doesn't want to talk I just quickly move on whatever I don't really mind or bother anybody but I feel like there needs to be a wider conversation around that because I feel like some of the things you hear people say who are in that scene about how people should act people like myself I think can kind of come across a little bit uh what's it discriminatory but it, it can kind of come across a bit weird as if like everybody is on that sort of time um because I think some of the comments I, that I kind of read on people when we were kind of debating this in a group were really interesting which I kind of want to point out where is it let me just quickly pull one up here um we were debating the topic we were debating and then um somebody says and then somebody actually highlights something that I actually didn't know this let me rewind some actually mentioned something that I never actually thought about if you're actually somebody that's from that community and from that scene you live that way and you're about that life and stuff right and they said as follows as basically as a queer person they said as follows bros just move different <laughs> 
So it bros just move differently. Half dare to get drunk so they so they wobble or don't gently move through the crowd, which is something I never thought about. That bros move differently through the crowd, even the way that they kind of try to get to the front and whatnot isn't graceful, isn't considerate. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of like, especially if you've got a nice dairy uh, girl or boy, uh, whoever you identify, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of kind of back arch, kind of like, sorry, excuse me, touching, which... I've never been a fan of. I always put my hands up in a flipping police dance before I'm putting this somewhere. I'd much rather, you know, get near the air and say, excuse me, like then touch them on their shoulders and stuff. I just think it's unnecessary to be touching people you don't know, but that's just me. So I just never thought that was cool. Um, it's one thing if you're flirting with somebody in the conversation and you want to, you know, um, create some sort of weird bond i don't know whatever you're some sort of flipping pickup artist thing you're doing all right but it's just some random person you're kind of behind them and you're touching them that's like the most creepiest thing ever but anyway, maybe it's just me we move on um it continues in the comment it said the other half of the men there or the bros are there to fuck and spend their time either doing coke in a bathroom or just getting too close to the ladies now that's funny because i felt like maybe because of the nature of the drug it maybe makes you a little bit way it maybe kind of depletes your your um how do you say what does coke do to you sometimes it sort of depletes your maybe your reasoning your level of reasoning you don't reason as well you kind of rush to conclusion you're always kind of like you know you maybe go to the nth degree and for some people it makes them incredibly horny but i'd imagine a lot of people that go to these sort of parties for the most part are really doing that gear anyway right you're probably on that sort of gear or maybe you're not maybe you're on ecstasy that maybe makes you more happy maybe you're on lsd maybe you're on mushrooms maybe you're on acid that kind of makes you a little bit more social with you in your world i don't really know sorry pardon me for that one but the coke thing i didn't really understand why that's an issue for the bros only i imagine it's an issue for everybody especially with people in that scene because they do a lot of ghb and whatnot that i wouldn't assume is something that would make you the most uh friendly ever i don't know maybe i'm wrong it continues um doing coke and just want to be close to ladies it says there's less grace when people bump into each other when it's broish people being worried guys are hitting on them and giving them strange looks and that's exactly what i mentioned in my burger story where i kind of inadvertently stared at somebody for way too long i was just like admiring the scene of all these amazing people and i just noticed oh shit there's all these topless girls in here oh shit that guy's naked oh shit do you know what I, mean? I was just noticing it and i guess for the whatever moment I, my eyes stared way too long they caught my eye and they immediately started covering up and i was like damn i've ruined it do you know what I mean i've ruined the night because i've i immediately reminded them that they were topless when they didn't actually even remember because they were in a safe space so i felt really bad about that and i kind of thought from down on i have to make sure that i don't do that even though you know my boy by boy my boy monkey brain is just looking boop 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 just look you know you should just go in there basically willing to dance and kind of lose yourself in the music and not really think about those kind of things it continues here and then the person said obviously promoting the the fold night that they do on sundays which is called unfold which is usually a residence and friends family and friends sort of like let's say um party that they put on now because they've got their own residence party called resistance but essentially unfold i've always been raved about with people and i guess the reason why they rave about it to me is because they're from that scene and it's the most comfortable place to be at because usually on sundays you want to imagine a lot of bros will go there and also the parties are very much geared towards that community of people and it runs from like really early in the afternoon to like 12 a.m and that's it it continues um and another person says as follows i didn't really like uh which is the person i said in flum yeah this is a comment i didn't the one the one comment i didn't like was this comment someone said in the, in the group they said this follows they said um um in my risk because i think i said something like um uh, i agree with i don't know i just didn't like this comment what they said they said the follows i have plenty of straight guy friends who i go clubbing with who are who would never be labeled as bros i've gone to nights like dyke energy with a couple of them it's just about actually dancing not leering being aware of how much space you take up to be honest i'm always most suspicious of big groups of straight guys like why are none of your mates women or queer most people who are cool have mixed group of friends which i just really take offense to because what it what it immediately assumes is that if you're if you're from that scene you're immediately queer that there isn't a square person that exists in the queer community which is in nonsense there are boring basic bitch type of people who are into the most normally average stuff in every kind of um subsect of society so to suggest just because you know for the most part they do have a stranglehold on the coolness right you don't get me wrong there is a, all most of our cool vernacular probably does come from that scene but let's be serious like just because you're from that community doesn't mean you're cool that just doesn't make any sort of sense and this notion that just because there's a bunch of bros and they don't have any women or queer friends in their group that they're not exactly going to be down or cool or understand the scene is a little bit insulting too i feel like but it may be explains why places like Bergheim tend to always turn away big groups of boys unless they're clearly you know unless they're clearly gay 
in that respect, all right, or identify as queer, there is a real um, tendency to turn away those groups of people in those kind of clubs. And that might be the reason because they generally think for the most part, if you don't have any people in your group that are from that community, then generally you're not going to get what's going on inside. You're going to make people uncomfortable and it's just isn't a space for you. Just go somewhere else where you can kind of feel more free to do your thing because you're going to be freaked out by what's going on in there. Maybe that's the reason why, but I feel like there needs to be a little bit more conversation is not maybe the right term maybe more communication maybe more understanding maybe more benefit of the doubt to get people to kind of meet them where they're at because unfortunately i feel like for them especially the um the queer lgbtq scene and whatever i'll term them as like the old scene in terms of nightlife i feel like unfortunately for them they've created something so successful so fun because literally i have the most fun i dance the most when i go to these community these community parties like there's no doubt like my shirt is soaking after going to those inferno events and going to flipping um events like uh Budokai events like Hishi Day. I didn't go to the festival that they put on. I forgot the name of the hit festival, but all these thing, events are the best events in London, hands down. That's why all the quote unquote cool people go to those kind of parties because they're much better than going to the standard club nights that you might get in the standard kind of club spaces. So I think unfortunately for these people, they, they're creating a really great product. The word is spreading. People like myself are talking about it. Um, I'm in a, and I'm not in the community, even though I'm a part of the, dance music community you'd say maybe or whatever it may be um i'm not exactly part of that scene scene i'm talking about it it's only getting bigger and bigger and they're gonna have they're gonna probably encounter more of these issues going forward and unfortunately we don't really have door picking policies even they, they, they do enforce them in a lot of the kink nights i know like crossbreed and whatnot and club verboten they're really really strict about even if you buy a ticket doesn't mean you're guaranteed entry you have to abide by the dress code all that sort of stuff there's still a tendency in the uk that towards customers or punters feeling like if they bought a ticket they should be able to go in so it feels like there's going to be a little bit of an impasse being met in the future where they're going to have to maybe turn away a few people those people are going to get pissed off like how dare you turn me away and it it might end up being a situation kind of reflected with studio 54 that kind of you know was the beginning of the end of studio 54 when they sort of like were for the general public for the community and they started getting a bit too baked a bit too busy all the famous people went to come then more people went to come off the back of seeing the famous people at the club and then suddenly all the average joes that went there made it cool couldn't get in anymore and then that kind of was a big getting at the end of the of 54 according to the history books and whatnot so i hope that doesn't happen to this sort of scene and community but there is some rough sort of like guidelines here that i checked up on online courtesy of crossbreed they have a list of party rules that they have which might give an idea on what people should do like myself who you would describe as a raging straight male and people like my, and people who identify like myself and also want to go to his party, maybe something you should keep in mind when you go in there um, to kind of make sure that you don't, you know, cause people um, any issues and you treat their space, you know, with respect and whatnot. So this is part of rules courtesy of Crossbreed, right? One of the kind of four leaders in terms of doing kink nights here in London. And there's a few others as well, like Club Verboten, I mentioned and a few more, but, you know, Crossbreed and Club Verboten are probably the top two out here. And their house rules as follows. Um, they said um, underneath the party rules we hate rules that diminish our night to express ourselves and are firm believers that some rules are made to be broken however we want to create a party that enters the experience of queer and marginalized people as such it is necessary to create certain rules in in place so to have certain rules in place if you don't want to consider how your presence affects others in the space then don't buy a ticket so clearly they're sitting the you know they're kind of drawing the line there and basically letting you know what I'm going. rule number one we are queer fetish party and you should dress accordingly. You can also apply this to Inferno, to be honest, you know. I'm actually lucky that I get into Inferno dressed the way that I am, but it is pretty, for the most part, everyone does kind of go for it. They don't mess around with the outfit sit flipping um, crossbreed, sorry, uh, Inferno and crossbreed. Crossbreed probably more, but Inferno definitely. Introverts and extroverts are welcome alike. We just ask you to step out of the realm of social conformity. As a general rule, if you can't get out the, if you can get out of the bus and not have people um, turn around in shock, you probably won't get in. Entry will be denied to those who have hairstyles and outfits which are deemed to our team to be cultural appropriation. Wow, I didn't know that. Strictly no fancy dress. I like that. And if you need to further inspiration, there's plenty on our website and Instagram. No photos on the dance floor or in the play area. Please use wellness sanctuary in bathrooms or smoking area to scroll instagram to text your friends that's another thing i noticed too about inferno and other places like that 
for as great as parties that they are, for as many people who go out dressed with the most outlandish and forward thinking outfits and quote unquote crazy outfits that you would see, there's a real lack of phones on the dance floor. To the point where when I was recording some content that I kind of uploaded on my YouTube, I think you saw, saw some clips and stuff. When I recorded those videos, those were the max I could record. The first couple of times I went, I didn't know you couldn't record videos. And immediately people were saying, no, I, some someone came in there to me who was a kind of wellness person. Hey, people are getting freaked out that you're recording. I was like, oh, I'm just recording the party. I'm not trying to record anybody and expose their details. I was literally just pointing upwards and kind of cutting people's heads off. And that was still an issue. So... For the most part, people don't even use their phones, even in a place where they kind of, you would imagine they would because they look all amazing and you imagine they want to, they'd have, want to you know, capture the moment and stuff. They're all just living in that moment and enjoying the rave, which is really, really impressive because it's very, some, it's very much so something that I kind of see a lot when I go to Berlin, right? It's something that's kind of normal. But in London, you, you know, for the most part, you go to most raves, everyone's kind of got their phone out waiting for the drop and to put on their Instagram stories and record shitty videos. So it's nice to see that being sort of like put in as a rule, like no photos on the dance, no pictures, no, no phone use on the dance floor, go to the side or whatever, you may be on the toilet and use your phone, but don't do it on the dance floor. I love that. It says as follows. Um, we operate a strict no photos rule. Your phone's lenses will be covered upon entry. Our house photographer will be floating around if you would like your photo to be taken. Again, asking permission. They'll always ask consent beforehand. If you don't want your image to be used for cross beat professional purposes, please do not give comment. Sorry, consent having a photo taken. You may withdraw your consent at any time. Please just email us. So clear, open line of communication there in terms of pictures. We have zero tolerance policy on harassment of any kind. If you witness harassment of somebody that makes you feel uncomfortable, please let one of our armband wearers know and we will deal with the perpetrator armband wearers will be wearing light up armbands and are all wonderful and welcoming so clearly again all that stuff being said out there arcs don't assume um sexual preferences or genders pronouns are one of the ways we live our identity try to introduce yourself with your own pronouns ask for someone's pronouns politely then introduce please respect something everyone and how he she they would like to be addressed which again something you have to get used to if you're not got used to going to sort of spaces we know it's a rave it gets hectic but don't deliberately touch anyone without consent don't push or bash people be courteous and kind no mean no which is something someone said in the chat, which I didn't actually even realize that was an issue. If you're somebody from that scene, you're just not used to the bro sort of like uh, energy or screaming because at the mixes or getting excited at a drop or people barging towards the front. Because people still people still barge at these parties. It's not like they they're all sort of sliding through like Michael Jackson, but it's just done with a little bit more grace. You know what I mean. Another one says, men, please be aware of potential threat you pose to strangers. Do not assume that because you think you're a nice guy, your presence won't make others feel uncomfortable or fearful, which is something I've definitely had to kind of realize when I go to spaces, like just to kind of, that's why for the most part, I think, except for one occasion, I've never actually got in the middle of the dance floor, which is sad, but anyway, it doesn't matter because I always dance my, my face off anyway, but I always tend to stay on the outside perimeter. Usually when I go to Inferno, you'll see me sitting on the flipping chairs on the side. It's just as you come in, they've got these little fold-out chairs. I just sit there. It's a bit weird because I look like, I look probably even more leery there, but I just feel like after, after a while, you don't want to, you know I mean, you don't want to keep, excuse me, excuse me, and putting your hands up. So I just sit there, get my beer, and just listen to people. And if it, the music kind of pops off and I want to dance, I just stand up and dance in that space. It's all well and good. Um, but yeah, that's what I've generally tried to do when I've kind of gone to spaces for myself to kind of make it, you know, comfy and stuff. Another one says here, rule, trans people regularly experience discrimination, misgendering, fetishization, transphobia and microaggressions at Crossbreed. We center the trans and non-binary experience and want to create a safer space for trans people. Anybody interfering on the space, infringing on the space will be removed. Again, clear and to the point. We are working hard to include inclusive, diverse, and anti-racist organization. We want to create parties that are safer for BIPOC people. In order to do this, we sent our experience of BIPOC at Crossbreed. Races are strictly prohibited as it's a fetishization of black and non-black people of color. If you are reported for racist behavior of any kind, you will immediately removed from the party and banned. If you don't fully adhere to the difference between having preference of fetishization, someone it is not safe to attend the party and strongly suggest attending one of our workshops first. And I like that. They've got these workshops they do. They've got these, um, what they call, they've got these socials they do on Wednesdays as well so there's always an opportunity to learn there's always an opportunity to meet the community to get kind of used to it to dip your toes in a little bit and kind of get acquainted with it and also I think even though this is really kind of maybe over the top for some people it's a little bit um self not so self absorbed what's, what's, the, what's the word when you're a little when you take yourself too seriously I forgot that term is I think what it does is that it turns off the people it's meant to turn off. That's a good thing about it. When you put these rules in place, how much they got? I'm not going to read all of them, but they've got like 14 rules here, right? And they're all pretty, you know, 
sternly writ, written and clearly written so there's no kind of vagueness involved in it you know exactly what they said they said what they said right i said what i said whatever that term is it does turn off the right people the people who get annoyed by this and think this is too much too many rules it's not fun it's not free um i feel like you're telling me off blah 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 i feel offended i feel attacked you don't come and clearly they don't want you there and you're not the kind of person that would vibe with their crew anyway um so that kind of makes sense so this isn't this in a way even though like i said before we don't really have door picking culture in the uk this kind of is a good way to kind of be door picky because you set the precedent already with the instagram account with the photos, photos that they post up on there if you're not comfortable with the people you see on that feed you probably will be turned off and not go and maybe unfollow the account and then secondly they've got these rules that they put in place that they're always reminding people about code of conduct code of conduct party rules party rules so it's a real good way to sort of like set your stall out and make sure people know while go on another point here number 10 says ableism of any kind will not be tolerated people um create spaces for people for people with disabilities be conscious of our community and very neurodiverse and that doesn't mean your behavior is wrong with that said neurodiversity is not an excuse for rule breakers to inappropriate behavior of any kind so clearly trying to make sure they kind of cater to everybody but yeah anyway loads of good, good rules on there to kind of point out that kind of way to kind of uh put out there for everybody that maybe would be attracted to go to these kind of nights like me identify themselves as straight and kind of maybe feel like they're not welcomed or feel as if their rules are a bit too constrained whatever not or maybe if you're from that scene you feel like the presence of straight people is maybe putting you off to go into these events in general i just feel like unfortunately you guys have created a great product it's just it is. you create a great product people are going to want to come and attend it and i feel like in general if you want to grow and become a successful business anyway you're kind of going to have to sort of like accept cash from the normies or whatnot or from the people that are not exactly from the straights as they quote unquote so they maybe have to be a meeting in between to kind of get people to kind of align all together but um i don't know what do you think in the comments down below do you think this sort of stuff is necessary do you think it's overboard um do you as a person that identifies yourself as lgbtq or under the ban of lgbtq and queer do you sometimes get annoyed when people like myself attend your parties how can we do better to better acquaint ourselves in your scene so it doesn't come across like we're leering we're staring um we're objectifying we're being too big in our presence and man spreading and spreading our shoulders and being too bro and stuff how can we be better party patrons because we want to come to your parties i know for myself i want to come to your parties i want to dance because it's the only place i really get to dance close my eyes and sweat and leave with my front of my t-shirt soaked my back of my t-shirt soaked and my wallet absolutely empty your parties are sick i want to attend more but i also want to make sure that everyone this day doesn't feel like i'm invading on their space so how do i and others go about and do that properly is that possible even maybe it's not possible maybe it's just you know a lost cause and we have to kind of just leave you to what you do and you kind of you know leave us what we do which i don't like i, I don't like that separation or segregation i like everyone to kind of get along i know it's not going to be likely i know you know the boys that go and attend tech house raves are not probably going to go to a flipping porn sexual they're not going to go to a heron sooner i understand that but in an ideal world i would like there to be a bit more um collective unity personally for me the dance music scene but again i'm a i'm a flipping um i'm a little bit naive um i'm somebody that you know sees the the glass half empty or see the glass half full sorry um i mean i you know whatever that that's how i am in that kind of stuff I'm a little bit too positive and that sort of stuff because uh, i still see this dance music scene as an opportunity to create a even if it's a fake um or a temporary utopia but we can create some version of what we want society to be at large i mean we can do it and hopefully what we do can maybe be replicated in some ways possible in the wider society it's you know it's a bit it's a bit self-indulge and whatnot but you know what i mean hopefully hopefully that makes sense hopefully hopefully that makes sense